Welcome to video one in load runner and performance testing. And in this syllabus, we're going to kind of have a look at working with, um, you know, um, performance testing and testing in general, and also looking at tools like load runner to actually get our uh, testing going, right? So, but before we do that, we need to understand kind of what is testing and what is not only testing, but what is software testing. And to understand software testing, we need to understand software performance testing. Uh, you get performance testing in general, which can have, you know, it's a broad perspective of uh, what, can be uh, what can be covered and whatnot, where software performance testing is one subject, and that's definitely what we will be looking at, right? So, Software performance testing in general. So software engineering performance testing, that's normally what it's called. So the short term is, is software performance testing. The actual long term is called software engineer performance testing. Um, now, software engineer performance testing is in general a testing performed to determine how a system performs in a terms of responsiveness and stability under a particular workload, okay? So it's all about the stability of a program, how it responds and how it just performs in general, right? That's why it's called performance testing. So it could also serve as an investigate measure to validate or verify other quality attributes of a system, such as scalability, reliability, and resource using. So at the most important thing when doing performance testing and or just testing in general, the thing that you need to always remember is, is the thing scalable? How are we going to do that? Well, how are we going to determine that it's scalable? Well, we're going to determine that it's scalable by looking at um, performance testing, looking at testing it. Um, and then the second thing which is also important in testing is reliability. How reliable is that software or that you know specific thing that we are testing? How reliable is it? Uh, you won't know that until you do um, testing on it. So performance testing is a subject of performance engineering and engineering computer science practice which strives in, to build performance into an implementation, design and architecture of a system. So you got to know that performance testing is a subject of performance engineering, right? And um, it strives to build performance into an implementation um, in the design and architecture of a system. So performance testing is, is one thing. And the other thing that we're also going to chat about in the following videos is called functionality testing, um, which we'll be covering later on. But when we do performance testing, we're not really bothered about uh, functionality testing or functional testing. Um, so you're not worried about it. And um, that's the thing about performance testing. It's two different subjects. Okay, so performance testing uh, can also be seen as as NFT, which stands for non functionality testing phase, right? So you got to bear in mind when doing testing, um, you know, there is a lot of different testing that can be covered. And that's why normally in, in a corporate, you will have a certain, um, you'll have a certain department that just concentrates on testing, right? So yeah, low runner performance testing, let's dive into this, let's see what's going on, right? So when do we do performance testing? What is performance testing? Well, we know now that performance testing is there to have a look at the architecture, the scalability, the reliability, uh, the stability of a certain program or certain service. Um, it all, it's also about, you know, covering um, how responsive it is, how quick it responds and that kind of stuff. So that's when we look at performance, it's also about speed, right? Um, and then performance testing, what do we use it for, right? So that's that two questions are kind of very much similar, right? Uh, what is performance testing and what do we use it for? Well, we use it to determine, um, you know, what is the scalability and reliability of a program. So it's basically, uh, when you look at performance testing, it's like stress testing. Um, you know, putting stress on a certain element is one of the key things that we can use to, you know, determine the uh, testing um, terminology of a certain program. So let's have a look at the types of performance testings we have. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it out and this is just a couple of them. There's a lot of them. And as we as we progress through the uh, through the syllabus, like we will start covering most of them. So uh, types of performance testing is load testing, stress testing, soak testing, spike testing, 
configuration testing and isolation testing, right? So let's start off by having a quick chat about each of them. So load testing, load testing is the simplest form of performance testing, right? So it's right at the beginning. This is right. This is where we start off. It loads um, a test that is usually conducted and understand the behavior of the system under a specific expect load. So this is just basically loading up. Um, you know the program making sure that it's working like it's supposed to um, this load can be expected um, concurrent number of users of their application performing of a specific number of uh, transactions within a set of duration so basically um, loading is just basically having a look at okay how how much it can handle um, when a specific number of transactions um, can happen with this um, certain software and what is the duration of it uh, this test will give out the response time of all important business critical transactions in a database or an application server. So that is just an example, right? Uh, load testing is um, basically normally used in corporations and or uh, certain softwares that needs to communicate with a backend service, like for instance, a database or um, an application server, right? So the load testing kind of determines, okay, how much can it actually handle on a certain time, right? Um, like this is normally, load testing is normally used in website testing. If they want to test what's the load of um, a website or how much can it handle, right? So that's load testing in essence. The next thing is stress testing. Stress testing is normally used to understand the upper limits and capacity within the system. This is kind of test is done by determining the system's robustness in terms of extreme load and helps application administrates to determine if the system will perform uh, significantly. If the current load goes well above the accepted maximum. So load testing and stress testing runs uh, hand on hand because load testing is kind of, okay, it works, right? And stress testing is, okay, it works, let's take it the next step, right? So that is, that's the thing about uh, stress testing. Now the next thing is soak testing and soak testing also known as endurance testing. So when we, when we speak about soak testing, um, it's endurance testing as well. It's usually done to determine if the system can sustain the continued expected load. During the soak tests, memory utilization is monitored to detect potential leaks. So the reason why we would use load, stress, and soak testing is to kind of test the servers to see what is the maximum capability. Load testing, you know, we start off by having a look at, okay, that's how it works, um, and it's working great. Stress testing is, okay, let's let's add some stress to it. Let's, let's let 2,000 people at the same time go to a certain website. Let's see the reaction, right? And then, um, Soak testing is okay. Well, we've done that, but let's let's keep on doing that, right? Let's keep on having a large amount of number of people in a certain time period. Keep on going to, let's say, for instance, I'm just using, you know, website as an example, because uh, at the end of the day, website is still a, a software, right? But it's a web software, a web service. So in essence, um, this three goes hand on hand, and um, soak testing in essence is just you know the longer duration of stress that you put on it. Uh, spike testing. Spike testing is done by suddenly increase the number of load generated by users by a very large amount and observing the behavior of the system. Now, a good example, if you don't do this kind of testing, is um, like you you are trying to avoid. Let's say a good example of this is hacking. Right? You want to try and avoid um, a SQL injection. Uh, or let's say just general hacking, you're going to do, you're going to follow those testing steps to avoid it, right? Uh, stress testing um, will, will also work hand on hand with SQL injection and spike testing as well. So we're trying to put this whole scenario under a certain test in labs and then uh, have a look at the outcome. So finishing off with spike testing, uh, the goal of spike testing is to determine whether the performance will suffer, the, um, the system will fail, or it will be able to handle dramatic changes to the load, right? So you want to check that. And, you know, good a good website to think about when we think about this is a website like Facebook, for instance. Everybody knows Facebook. A lot of people use Facebook. And when we think about Facebook, the first thing that we think of is there's over 100 million people that's using it, right? And you should think that they should go through certain testing, right? 
So, um, I mean, spike testing can definitely happen on Facebook. Let's say it's 8 o'clock in the morning. Everybody just came at the office.